What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, it's been a while. A lots, lots to talk about. What's yeah, up? it's crazy. What's going on? You're already, already feeling the impact, I think, of 2022 being A, crowded, and then B, just having, I think, higher profile product 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to reiterate what we do here on the Nerd Gym Report. We not only bring you the news, but we give you a certain insight as to what we'll see. We sort of try to predict Think about what's going to happen um, in this in this genre with some of these great movies that we've been uh, very much anticipating and waiting for. Um, and so we, we we try to just get a deeper discussion, not just report the news, but really try to understand what's going on and how it affects the future of these characters and the universe. Um, but let's get into it. The Book of Fett, Brian, you said it first. You're the first person that said it to me. Mandalorian 2.5. Yet again, we get another fantastic, interesting episode. Man, what's the dude's name with the, the dude with the red eyes, the blue fake cab? Cad Bane. What an entrance. Cad Bane in live what an and in the entrance. flesh. What an entrance. You see, the, you see Boba Fett in the movie, I, I mean, in the show, and he didn't say, I don't think he said anything. It's crazy. But again, we got another terrific episode with The Mandalorian. Uh, who directed this one? Dave Was Filoni. It Filoni. Dave Filoni. Bizarre. Yeah. Listen, I, I've never, usually I watch an episode of a show and that's about it. But I don't repeatedly like, I got to watch this again. I got to watch it again and watch pieces of it just because I can. Um, and this was that sort of an episode, man. And it sort of sets up a lot of situations. Again, Brian, to be honest, the way I look at this entire season of Boba Fett, um, I think this is just the foundation for the next season, next two or three seasons, in my opinion. Because whatever they are attempting to do or planning to do, it can't be resolved in this episode, in this next episode. It just can't. Your thoughts? Lots of thoughts and lots of questions. So let's unpack this a couple different ways. First off, I want to throw it back to you. Where would you rank that episode among, let's call it the Disney Plus episodes of tv that we've seen so now i'm going to bring the mcu i want to bring all the mandalorian seasons where was that episode in the rankings i think it for me it's it's definitely in the top three yeah that's it what may I was be say. number one that's what i would have to on say on its own three. i was gonna say that okay so we're in agreement that yeah. on its own this was one of the i don't i could i was trying to come up with the analogy this is like the you know, this is like the, the the Roger Clemens 20 strikeout game. This is like, you know, somebody goes six for six with six home runs. I, it's just like, just when you <laughs> think there's nothing left in the tank, Dave Filoni's it's... like, wait, I have a 120 mile an hour fastball that I want to show you. Incredible episode of television. As incredible as it was, kind of confusing, like in the sense of, I just don't understand what the point of this show i know you're you're putting forward this thesis of it's all set up yeah. but it's still to me even if it was all set up why so far in on the mandalorian and taking us back into setup for that show it almost feels like yeah. what show are we setting up here we're setting up that show as much as we're setting up this one i'm just confused by the titling you know in, in a weird yeah. way i was thinking like if you just called this show I remember in the old days, like Star Trek, the next generation. And you could kind of, you know, one week it would be like the whole crew. The next week it would be like you're totally disconnected and you're with two crew members. If you just call this like Star Wars universe, this would have been totally fine. But when you call it Book of Fett, you create this expectation that everything is going to revolve around Boba Fett. And the 
two best goes episodes that word of the again. show he hasn't been a part of, basically. Yeah. And we've just gone into a totally different show. So I'm not complaining about the content we got because it's been awesome content. I'm mm. just questioning the organization and the plan. But then I have Ming-Na Wen in an interview telling me by the end of this season, the plan will make sense. So I have no idea what she's talking about. Exactly. No idea what she's talking <laughs> about. How is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. And these are the type of things when you say, although, you know, when Tom Holland was talking and he's saying, this is the best this, and we're like, oh, man, here we go. And then it ends up being that. I hope this is one of those situations because I don't know where we're going with this. But, again, I, I feel like this is in the foundation. Although the way they told the story, I think it was just... I don't know. Let's see what this episode brings to tie this all up that makes us say, oh, and that's what I don't think we're going to get. So, yeah, and that's the thing is, like, I've, I've impugned Robert Rodriguez as a showrunner, but I, I do want to be fair. Every episode has been written by John Favreau and Dave Filoni. They're, they're the masterminds. Mm -hmm. I, they, they have earned every benefit of the doubt for planning an organization. I just can't think of a show that's been this bizarrely crafted in terms of its order. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I mean, my goodness, the, the amount of content we got this week in the show. And that's why I kind of almost don't even want to talk about the finale. I, I kind of almost want to just talk about what we got because it just takes us in so many different directions. So I'd love um, your reaction um, to... Well, let's say, I guess, do the off-world stuff and then we'll bring it back to the Tatooine stuff. Your reaction to seeing Grogu, seeing Luke done right. Oh, yeah, he looked amazing. I mean, and then Soka making, I mean, basically didn't need to be there, but clearly <laughs> they had a purpose for putting her in there. And it was like, we, we don't need, like, that's like the, you know, unsportsman like for taunting after the play we don't need yeah. this to make this scene kill but we're going to throw her in there anyway what was your thoughts on sort of that that whole sequence played out on i don't know exactly is what planet some people say that's yavin 4 yeah. some people say it's a different planet but i assume that's the temple that kylo ren desecrates yeah. is what we're seeing yeah. being built so uh your reaction to that whole sequence we're like what we what surprised you the most what did you like the most did you not like anything about it or well, I, I, I liked it. I, I didn't have any issue with, with it. I, what I thought was funny was uh, <laughs> when Mando pointed his gun, I didn't expect to see you here. Like, those, you stole the words exactly right out of my mouth. <laughs> and it was done purposely. It was done purposely and beautifully executed. Uh, but I enjoyed that, that, that um, sequence. I enjoyed because um, it makes us wonder. And this this is going back to I believe Mandalorian second season when Ashoka set, talks about Grogu's history when, when we first hear his name in terms of somebody took him out we don't know we still don't know some people yep. are speculating he was hiding in R two D two I don't know um, unless R two D 2s head pops open we won't <laughs> we we won't know you know what I'm saying but um, it takes us back to Order sixty six and what he witnessed and. Yeah. And why he's so traumatized and why he's, but you know, it, it's a lot of uh, different things that opens up. And I think, yo, honestly, there Grogu is going to be with for, for be with us for a very, very long time. And I think they're setting up the future with Grogu. I think this episode was a reminder that whether or not they intended it this way, Grogo has become an essential part of the Star Wars mythology. And I think there is a fascination with what can you do with this tiny little puppet? Yeah. But I will say this was a masterclass in adding the new wrinkles in a way that, yeah, on the one hand, you're like, oh, that's cute. But on the other hand, you're like, that's kind of cool. This idea of repressed memories, because don't forget, he's a baby, but he's 50, right? Like yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's seen some things. And so yeah. I think this episode touched on the fact that somebody did train him in the past. Cause Luke's like, I'm not really teaching him. He just kind of like remembers, remembers. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I love the training montage, right? Like it was the, 
parallels to Empire Strikes Back, except Luke is now the one kind of playing the the Yoda role, and Grogu is kind of the one half struggling, but then sort of half displaying his skill. I love the remote from Obi yeah, One yeah, Star yeah, yeah. Wars being thrown in there. Like, I mean, again, this is where Baloney being so steeped in Star Wars, he just doesn't miss those little things, yeah, yeah. and it connects so well. And as you you said way back when, and it's gotten a lot of press. I mean. Lucasfilm heard, you know, they, Disney heard the flack around the season two finale Mandalorian, went and hired the deep fake guy that that bettered their product, and look what they got. I mean, Luke yeah. looks really, really, really good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, I think, and I think it is, do you think Grogu is suffering from PTSD and hence his aggressiveness towards anything that he seems, um, anything that he sees as a threat he uses his power with like he just like destroys this this electric drink he throws people mm -hmm. from side to side he um um what's her name carano initially that first time that he showed his force yep. choke he immediately goes to that yeah so so you think that's that 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 trauma that he witnessed is causes him to act out in this way yeah, I think it's actually something that I've been wanting Star Wars to do, which is that Star Wars historically has always been very binary, right? This idea of there's the light and the dark and the light users never traffic in. Like, so like even Anakin, right? Basically, when he started trafficking in Force Choke and some of the Sith powers, he was kind of gone, right? Like at that point, like he wasn't really like ambiguous, mm -hmm. he wasn't a hero anymore. But I've been arguing that Star Wars could do well to have a Jedi or a Jedi type character who kind of straddles the line, who actually does dabble in light powers and dark powers. And you can't totally tell um, where they're aligned. And so I think you're seeing that. I would not have bet Grogu to be the manifestation of that, but you're kind of seeing it. He has a dark side, whether it's because he actually understands it or because he you know, needs more training. But I like the fact that he's unpredictable. I like the fact that he isn't just force push, force pull, force jump, that like he breaks out. Yeah. He's like, I need to, I'm hungry. I want to kill this <laughs> frog. Like, I'm going to, if I need to use dark power to do that, I'm going to do that. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I think that's actually really exciting that, that they could, they could be going in that direction. Did this sequence, I know how I feel, did this sequence make you want to see? Jedi Academy as either a part of one of these shows or its own show. It would be an interesting show in seeing Luke. I mean, it's almost like seeing Ralph Macho Cobra Kai, him struggling with a school and seeing that process because, you know, they're different. These They're not all going to receive the training the same way. And he has to deal with, he has to be a teacher. Yep. It'll be interesting to see him in that role. And the only guy that can do it is Sebastian Say. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but that, I because I, I was pitching to you, like I've always been this like, hey, they gotta get away from, from the Skywalkers, they gotta get away from the Skywalkers. And then when they left Mando season two, I was like, but the one piece of the mythology in the Skywalker family we've never seen that I would actually watch is the Academy phase. Cause it's always talked about in the novels. It's even mm -hmm. referenced obviously in the Ryan Johnson movie, but I actually now having seen this episode, I'm like, yeah, I think, I think we're ready. I think if they wanted to do that, um, that would be kind of a cool idea. And obviously mm -hmm. if you've got a Luke anchor, even if it's not Mark Hamill, um, that actually would kind of really, you know, get people, get people watching. So, I loved it. I like this. So, by the way, the, the Ahsoka cameo was not idle. She had some amazing lines that like, if you're a fan of the, the Clone Wars or whatever, where she's like, I'm a friend of the family. Cause she was obviously Anakin's Padawan yeah, once yeah, upon yeah. a time. Such a great line. And then like at the end, when she tells Luke so much like your father, there's like a lot of meaning in that. And the fact that they were sharing screen time was, was super cool. So you can, and you um, can tell that he respects her. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Although I did, I did see some people speculating that they were like getting together, and I'm like, no, that's that's, that's not happening. But uh, but no, I, it also was a nice little tease and reminder that she's got her own show coming, which which obviously I think could be could be very very entertaining. So so there was that piece. 
What did you think about the Western kind of back on Tatooine? I mean, my th- this was straight out of the 1960s, and I thought it was amazing. It was beautifully done. It was like seeing that silhouette. I, listen, I never heard of this dude before. And then I went, obviously, I went back in the YouTube, in the YouTube world and started catching up. And there's obviously there's history there that we'll probably revisit. And to see that interaction is going to be a much anticipated uh, show whenever that happens. Um, he can't die in the finale. If they kill him in the finale, I, I, yeah, I yeah. mean, that, I that's, these that's, 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 not that's a crime if they were to do that. I doubt if they do. Um, but his uh, entrance and the voice acting done, um, done by the same dude, uh, yeah. In the Clone Wars, correct? Um, because how do you get rid that's like Kevin Kevin Conroy, like how you get rid of him, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm so you. um, yeah, I think that was done beautifully, and it's like I can't wait to see more of that of him because I don't want to see the Boba Fett in him yet. If we see, do, I hopefully, hopefully they don't kill him. So I agree. So this was my like, so first off, I mean if he if he looks and sounds like Lee Van Cleef, you're right. That is the so the character from a few dollars more. Um, Lee Van Cleef is uh, actually I'm excuse me, good, the bad, and the ugly. Lee Van Cleef is the bad guy. He's Angel Eyes in that one. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the character that Cad Bane is based on, and his entrance is pretty much the same, right? Coming out of the Mirage, and then he's dressed exactly the same. He sounds even pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually a character that you know uh, George Lucas helped create. This is one of his guys, so. Uh, even now that that influence is there but yeah the gunfight is straight out of a Sergio Leone movie where like they show the eyes and then they're twitching the hands and then he draws on, on the deputy I agree with you my my I texted you I was like I just didn't understand how you could bring him into a show in the second to last episode of the season I just was like you can't I loved it and then I was like well this has got to be headed to much bigger things over much longer periods of time because I just was like you could have done this whole show this way. You could have literally had it as this guy comes into town in the first episode and he's doing his parallel track and you build over the whole season and they have their showdown. You can't possibly put him in the week before the finale and then them have their showdown. But that's what I'm saying, man. That's why I don't think they end. I don't think this is the last we see of him. I think... We'll see him again in the second season because they can't kill him off now because no. everybody this is this is the talk of the town right here for me he's you know got so much history with these characters like so he's got history with boba he was boba's mentor he gave him the blast mark in his helmet he's had issues with fennec shand who actually gives him a lot of trouble in one-on-one fights but like and he's actually crossed paths with Obi-Wan. Like, this is a dude who could show up in a lot of shows that they knows doing. and knows how to defend himself against a Jedi. Yes. So there's a lot of interesting things. And I think, and I hope, I think they know that. And I hope that is the case. They know they got a a, a moneymaker here, you know? So let us see. Anything else before we move on? No, it just, you know, I, like I said, I I can't, I I can't wait to just look back on the season to try to understand how this was all put together. But man, I tell you, (laughs) Mando season three, like I said, the fact that this guy could pop up in Obi Wan, maybe he, you know, it's just, you know, the, the Ashoka tease. It's just like everything is like, give me all these shows. I know Obi Wan's supposed to come in in May, so we don't actually have that long to wait. But yeah. like, give me all these shows now. Like they succeeded in hooking, I think, everyone uh, with these last two, uh, these last two episodes. It, I do think, like, you know, we'll we'll see about the finale. Tough act for the finale to follow. I will say that. Very tough act. These these two episodes were high level. Yeah. It's going to be hard. Yeah. It, it, it is going to be hard. Um, we've always talked about shows landing the plane. This one looks yep. really difficult. Um, hopefully, is they go out with a bang that, similar to Loki, the way they landed the plane there, I think was very, yep. very well done. I think we get something like that. I can't wait for the next season sort of the situation. You know, um, I'll be do there. You, hang on. Do you think so? Now, the other thing that's put me on guard with this show: Do you think that whatever we get in the finale, we will actually be waiting until season two of Boba to get it, or is there any chance 
that at season three, the reverse of what they did in this show, which is like it's Mando centric for a while, and then they flip the switch and they actually bring Boba into that show for part of the season, and that's where we get a little bit of the continuation. That sounds quite possible because of how they did it in the second season of Mandalorian. I mean, we were like really interested when Boba Fett came through, right? Yep. It was like, oh, snap. And now it's happened reverse, sort of. Um, even though the Mandalorian was doing well without Boba Fett, but he was sort of, sort of uh, certainly a welcomed uh, addition to that season. Uh, so it's quite possible. You know, they're building the foundation, I think, man. Of Star Wars. Well, that then, I agree with. Yeah, just call yeah. it Star Wars Universe. I mean, that's, yeah. if that's what's going to be, we you can just do whatever. Yeah. You can just say, like, we got a running show, 52 weeks a year, and, like, we'll drop in on The Mandalorian here. We'll drop in on Boba. Just, that's fine. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below about... Uh, by the time you see this, it'll probably you already have seen the final episode, which we'll try to do as soon as possible to get our reaction on that. Uh, but let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of the discussion we just had regarding episode six and where this whole season is going to look like, where what is setting up. Do we get a second season? Um, let us know in the comment section below. Next up. Listen, I know I've been a big proponent of the Batman making huge numbers. I've sort of calmed down a little bit, but I still think it's going to do very well. I think when it's said and done, if the movie is what I think it will be and most people think or feel it will be, then when it's said and done... Uh, is going to do very, very well. I think probably 1.5. Um, beyond that, it'll be tough, but it all depends on on, on um, what this movie is for people. Um, we're sort of getting, um, I, I sent Brian a, a, a link. It was called Box Office Report. They do this for every, every major movie. Yep. Okay. Um, and they came out, it was a great article. I should leave the, the link in the description for you guys. I, I'll try to remember. Um, but look at a box office pro, the Batman box office projections. Um, and they're coming out. What was the number that they came out with, Brian? Uh, opening weekend, 135 to 185 million domestic, kind of early long range projection. And I think they had, based on that range, that would kind of get you to like give or take 500 million US. Do we have exact numbers uh, about how many screens this movie will be showing on? No, I mean, I think it, it's going to be a pretty normal blockbuster release. So I'm kind of saying, think, you know, look for about 4,000 screens, give or take. And then, like I said, you're, you're basically going to lose just a handful. You're going to lose a handful of show times because of the running time being close to three hours. So you'll kind of give up, some, you'll give up some slots, but theaters are going to, you know, basically max out how many auditoriums they're they're putting this in. Yeah. Um, I just recently learned, I was watching the John Campion show, and I have something to say about John Campion. Not Nothing bad, but he says something that I just got to discuss because I don't agree with him. And it tends to happen, but I, I, I like what he does, so there's no shade at him, but um, sometimes he says something that's crazy. But... um. We already see some tickets on sale for much earlier than March 4th, March 1st, March 2nd, IMAX theaters. Um, is a chance that it, 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 there's a chance it could go a little bit about a little bit above 180. It's not going to reach the numbers that Spider-Man did because that's crazy. But and for that same reason that you said the the this long running time is going to eat into how many times it, it can show this so it's the the numbers can't go beyond a certain point um the only reason it would is because of these uh special i guess events uh, on march 1st 2nd and 3rd of that week um that we can get higher numbers than expected um when it's said and done up until that weekend is over brian um 
what is there a possibility that it can get above 200? Possible. I think it's unlikely. Um, you know, you know Spider Man obviously went to 260, kind of topped uh, Infinity War, only short of Endgame. Yeah. But again, sh- a little bit shorter movie, a little bit more family friendly movie, and a culmination movie. That that don't, don't underestimate what that means in terms of box office parlance. A culmination, really, of 20 years of Spider Man. Mm-hmm. So you kind of had this perfect storm and then you had great reviews right so it was like the hype was there so you had all the elements come together and you get 250 call it give or take i think this you know darker tonality it's the first movie um on the reactions we're hearing you know longer runtime but also controversial complex but incredibly well made that to me kind of says 150 to 200. I think 150 is a lock just because it's Batman and we haven't had a solo Batman movie in, in a decade. And I don't see any scenario where this is outright bad or uninteresting. Like, you know, even if it's polarizing, yeah. I think in a way that like Joker was polarizing. Where you go, but you know, look at Rotten Tomatoes. Like for a movie that was nominated for Academy Award and had its lead leading man win an Academy Award, very polarizing movie. A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people liked it, but everyone saw it and thought had a had a had a take. So I think yeah. this movie will fit that. So I think 150 were safe. Mm-hmm. 200, I'm I'm just a little skeptical, like I said, because it's so dark. I do think you're gonna lose some of the kids. And with three hours, you're gonna lose a couple people that way. Um, and if the how much how much like, is Joker, how much did Joker make? Well, Joker was not a huge open, okay, and it was R-rated, but it okay. wound up making one one. You know, one okay. billion one because of word of mouth, right? So got it, got it. The formula for this movie, like, so to put it in perspective, Batman versus Superman made 166 opening weekend. 166, which actually was uh, even more than Dark Knight Rises. But Batman versus Superman and word of mouth, that opening weekend was a very high percentage of what became like an 800, like a 700 to $800 million global box office. Yeah. So the formula for this movie, I think, is you want to open is it probably opens 150, 175, somewhere around there, but the buzz is there. And the yeah. drop, because the calendar's open, the drop is not nearly It'll as be, big. Yeah. So it opens at 150, 175, but then that total gross keeps going and you wind up at like one. I think I'm a little lower than you. I think like one two is kind of where this is one, two, one, three, like a Black mm-hmm. Panther level. That's kind of where we're gonna shake out. But that's the formula, I think, for this. I don't think it's, you know, Spider-Man did both, right? Spider-Man had great open, great legs. I think it's a crying shame that it doesn't have a China release date because this is a $2 billion. This is a $2 billion movie. Is that one seven and change already? It's a $2 billion movie that, like, is basically because of pandemic, because of China, we just don't get to see what the max number could be, which is a shame. But I I think Batman's, you have to have that run through April that you want to see uh, to get to like your type of number, you're you're gonna need like this. You're gonna need the audience score to be like A plus. Everyone's talking about it. You gotta see X. You gotta see Y. This is crazy what they did. That's and you gotta get people going back more than once. So, yeah, man. There's uh, definitely take that take a look at that article. It, it does present a lot of pros and some cons. And, and and Brian, you alluded to a lot of them, the cons um uh, for it not to get to these numbers that some people may think it could make so some some people like myself um but i i hear what you're saying also would just throw in here obviously depending on where you are um you know never like that but case numbers are coming down that's obviously a big pro you got to throw in there right now true true i mean you got governors talking about you know, not mandating masks, masks yeah. and, and stuff. So uh, things are easing up. People are sort of, uh, you know, nothing that's coming out that has, you know, in 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 terms of the variants and stuff like that has been, it's been weaker and weaker. Cases are going down. People are getting more infected, but you know, the mortality rate is not crazy. I do want to. Have you seen this trailer? in the theater 
was it attached to like Spider-Man or any movies you've seen? I can't recall. So I did. It makes a difference. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Like, and I had seen the trailer a hundred times already. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went before No Way Home and they played it. And I was like, dude, I don't care if you know nothing about Batman. How do you not watch not this? Because watch- I was yeah. watching on IMAX screen. How do you not see this and be like, I have to go? It, it, it plays really well on this the is, biggest screen. And this is what I wanted to I want to discuss because we're less than a month a month away, right? And I I can't wait. I can't wait for February February 9th tomorrow, 12 a.m. I'm up buying my tickets for back to back showings. I'm gonna see this movie. I'm taking a day off. You know what I'm saying? Probably read another, another, <laughs> read it a second time. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um, and I want to discuss a little bit about this movie and what we can expect. The pro, I mean, we're expecting something amazing. Things can go wrong because of how serious this movie is, right? Because we don't want it to be boring, which I doubt we'll see. Because we've seen some oh. amazing stuff, but it's you know, and we and we haven't seen all the characters yet. So there's still a lot more to see, even though they've shown. I don't need to see any more, but every time they show me something, I gotta watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like this would be perfect, you know how Quibi was it that 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 show that that thing that went under ten minutes yeah, of this yeah. a week? You, I'm in, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. So, I was talking to AJ about the Batman uh, movie and how our excitement over it, and we started talking about, you know, you know the Joker. They made this movie about the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And they did a deep dive on this character. Um, based on a lot of his perspective on the world. And it's just, you know, that type of movie, very deep. And I think this is our version in terms of the Batman. We're going into Batman. Because think about it. He knew nothing of, I mean, I'm pretty sure he knew he had money, but he, if you read the book, you'll find out that this is, you know, something that he didn't really know too much of. He lost something way more important, which was his parents. He lost everything when he lost them. And then to be growing up, um, being teased for his, you know, he was a very, he was a loner. He was a loner. And Brian, I hope you read this book because I'm finding it hard to speak because I don't want to divulge any okay. information about the book. I have it. But, I haven't read it yet. Yep. But um, there's a lot of interesting things that gives me some perspective about the Batman that we're going to see in this film. And this is this is going to be a very different but understandable type of Batman in terms of his personality and how green he is in his career as the Batman. We've already talked about how um, how angry he is, how aggressive he is in in terms of his way of deal, dealing out justice. Um, and this is going to be a very different take uh, on the Batman. And um, I don't know if you're a, if you're a Batman fan and fan of DC uh, universe. A fan of DC, period. How do you not see this movie not once but twice or three times? I think we're going to see something amazing. And uh, Brian, you got to, I hope you read this book this weekend soon so we can talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) But I agree. I think, I think if people have seen the clip of the funeral scene online, as I texted you, I think you already get a sense that the visuals are different. Yeah, uh, that that scene is it's very gray. Like the palette is very different. It's almost a little bit jarring. Uh, it's kind of minimalist. Like if you watch the scene until the sort of the one shock moment, 
it's very slow. It's like minimalist. There's not a lot of motion. Like everyone's kind of like even Pattinson is playing this very brooding, but almost like socially awkward character. Like he's almost acting like he doesn't, he, he says almost nothing. nothing. Like he's being talked to, he's being looked at, but his entire performance is like, he's Just looking, observing and he's looking studying, at. he's not talking. And I think it gives you this sense of like, that's really interesting. Like it's an interesting view of like what this guy might be like. Cause we, we have always, we have always been conditioned to think of Bruce is this kind of jovial. He's very well put together. Like he's, a, you know, he can be life of the party. He can be, but like he shows no sign of the trauma when he's in public yeah. as himself. No version of Bruce Wayne that we've seen ever did, right? Even Christian Bale, they had him in the hotel lake with the models or whatever, messing around, even though it was a complete facade, right? Yeah. So here's this guy who's like, he's outright weird. He's weird. Like you, you, you're in the you're in the church with him in this scene. Like this is a weird. Dude. Like if you just walk by this dude, you'd be like, "What's wrong with this guy?" Yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah, vibe yeah. he's given off. And then yeah. it leads to, I guess that's the, they show you kind of the rid, the Riddler. I guess is who you're seeing, but from a cool shot, it's like through the church window. Yes, yes, you yes. don't see who it is. It's just a silhouette. Oh, is he a, so yeah, exactly. they're, they're looking at each other. And then the see it's it's beautifully shot, but it's very creative. Like it's just different. Mm -hmm. When you see it, you'll be like, "I'm not watching a superhero movie at all. Like I'm yeah. watching something almost like classic." That's what it felt yeah. to me. It almost felt kind of classic, like old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny. I was watching uh, one of the trailers, and they show. I paused when they show Paul Dano's face, and his face is reflecting off of the the the. The mirror, uh, the the glass mm -hmm. um, uh, in front of him, and I'm like, oh snap! You can see Paul Dano, but you, he, I don't think he's disfigured. But they, I guess they just don't want you to see him. Yeah. But um, I can't wait for this movie, man. This, this is like it's all I can think about. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's, listen. Twelve a.m. Not. For, uh, February 10th, I'm going to be Pandango ready. Just ready. Refresh, refresh, refresh until purchase, until I got it. I'm going to text. Oh my God. I, I just can't wait, Brian. Um, anything to add before we move on? No, like I said, let's, let's say I'll, I'll read the book uh, over the next couple of days and then we'll do sort of a full, full, full on preview as we get closer to the, to the film. Yeah, and I suggest you guys. I will leave it the description, uh, leave the the link in the description for you guys to purchase this book. It's is is an easy read. I read it in one night. I was like, <sighs> wife was talking to me. I was like, Charlie Brown, <laughs> and I was just, I, I just made, I just made sure to hear for the cues so I can say yes or okay or later. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you, how how excited are you for this movie, man? Let us know. Um listen, we have we've mentioned it in the past, but we've never really gotten into a conversation about it. Brian, I don't know if you saw Masters of the Universe on Netflix. No, you told me it was bad. I actually didn't. Want, yeah. So I didn't watch the. I, I was going to, and then I didn't watch it because you were like, "This is not what it's, what it's purported." I to saw. Be. I, I saw the whole thing, but yeah. I, I got to watch it so I can give you know my honest take. I, I listen. It was. I, I didn't like it at all, yo. They had some good stuff, but very few and far in between. And watching Master of the Universe, Master of the Universe was whack, yo. This was whack, yo. It's like the thing, the, and this is the the problem with Masters of the Universe, the movie, the live action f f um, version of this. I don't know how Which you make this dope. Given, given, this thing has been given a thousand lives, so that's I, why we're I, talking about it. Yeah, I don't know how you make this dope, Brian. How do you make the Masters of the? How do you make a dude named He Man dope? Ram Man, really? It's not just he, man. It's, it's the side dudes, right? Yeah. Right? Like Merman, Beast Man, man. many it's like, faces. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like how how do you how do you make this dope? How? 
this looks like a science fiction street fighter. It, it's just a lot of characters, a lot of things. It's like, how do you make this dope? And it's just very, very difficult. How do you make it dope, Brian? Uh, it's hard. What a shame. I love these toys. And I love the oh, I yeah. love the old cartoon, man. It's amazing what they were able to get you to watch every day with like five animations <laughs> that they had back then. Like, oh, he draws the sword. He like he does the I'm gonna pound the fists. Yes. I'm gonna like I'll do my swim. Like, you know, it's <laughs> like five things that he could do uh but we watched it you know you know and, and we loved it no i agree with you it's a really tough update i almost think like you can't be faithful you can't really be faithful to the source material because it, it just will look too silly as we mm -hmm. said i mean if anyone who had the ram man toy how do you make that dude look you're just gonna crack up if you saw somebody on screen that actually looked like that and acted like that. Yeah. For, for, the only I, thing I said, yeah. The only thing I settled on that, and I don't know what you, how you would react to this, um, would be to do it super serious, but you would actually, it's so you would honor, like Merman wouldn't be like Merman. He'd be more like Aquaman. It would be like a dude who has like some gift or something to do with the water but he doesn't look like a, a lizard and a fish and so like yeah. but so you'd have magic right you'd have magic involved that's fine but it would almost be like the witcher like you do it that style and like you just do away with the classic costume devices because they're just too silly and you yeah. just put the characters names and have their personalities be reflective of the way the show was that's the closest i could get to trying to yeah. make this work I don't very serious yeah. no no I, I agree with you 100 that's where i was leaning towards you gotta you can't make it silly because it's not gonna work i don't care what story you give me it's not gonna work if it's silly you gotta make it serious and you gotta put some money into it because it gotta look dope if you tell if you were to tell me if i were to come to you brian imagine eternia as the world of avatar that that world yeah i'll be like okay i like i like where this is going keep going you haven't had you don't got me sold yet but keep going yeah. and you throw that serious talk in it then that's something i would have to consider because goofiness is not going to work no and but, i just think the the, to the toys are for kids and like they are goofy right it's like you know like that's the, like you look at them like if you ever had them as a kid you hold them up you're like these this doesn't translate and even i mean even as silly as the dolph lundgren version is I think yeah. they sort of understood that, right? Because they yeah. didn't try to actually adapt um, any of the true characters because it's impossible. But I think yeah. like, you know, the idea of like man at arms being like a, an accomplished, you know, sort of soldier, you can do that. The idea yeah. of like Tila as an Amazon, you can do that. You just can't make them look like the toys. That's, that's the, yeah, even you, he you, you, even you, he man, you can't make him look like the He-Man figure. Have, you have to X-Men him. You have to X-Men him. Yeah, exactly. You got to change the way they look. Yeah, you got to change the way they look. Um, by the way, in that um, original He Man with Dolph Lundgren, that line "Let the let this be our final battle." For all of you guys out there that saw Masters of the Universe, Kevin Smith's version of of this, or his, uh, uh, I guess, um, trying to revive this 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 franchise. They repeat that line three times in three different occasions. <laughs> it's like, really, yo? That's what you thought that was dope, that you needed to repeat it three times? Uh, ten, there were some instances of, of, of like, okay, but where this, where, where he took it and, yo, it just didn't work, yo. It just didn't work. And, and, it, and it's just like the the events surrounding this this doing this special show on Netflix. And it was just like, really, yo? This wasn't dope, yo. This wasn't dope. He needs to stop. Let Just be a fan. Just be a fan. Don't yeah. try to do it your way, yo, because you like this goofy stuff, yo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not into it, you know. Um, but anyway, 
Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think Masters of the Universe needs to be live action. What does it need to look like? I know they just uh, cast this dude. I don't know this dude. Do you know this guy? Not super well. Yeah, he's he's kind of been more of a supporting role. It was Noah Centineo. I think he's either aged out or just is too busy now. But uh, again, I just, you know, I see it. I'm like, that's that's fine. It's, it's not the point. It's like just you're not going to bulk up and look like this. You're not going to give him that silly bowl cut that he had. <laughs> Whatever, like just, you just come up with a new, fresh, modern he, look. And he man got to look dope. He man got to look dope. He can't look like he, what he did. It was, no. it worked fine. Like I can't watch he man, even though I love he man when I was a kid, I can't watch that now. No. I'm sorry. I can watch the Thundercats, <laughs> but I can't watch this. So I don't know. Let us know in the comment section below, man, what you guys think about this whole situation. Next up, this uh, this was a rather surprising cast because I don't know what the hell they're going to do with this. Dakota Johnson? Johnson, yep. Um, was cast as Madam Webb. Now, if you... I, this is where... I, where I got my first introduction to Madam Web was in the Spider-Man cartoons. And this was an older lady, blind. Um, she has a back a story that's pretty interesting, but, you know, I don't know where we are going with this. I I was confused. Like, how do, how are they going to make this? Is this Sony's uh, air ball? I don't know. They're reaching. Uh, what what I, I understand they want to do this Spider Verse thing, and she's, you know, she's a, a, a she's she's a mutant, right? So that's interesting, but. Where are they going with this? What story are they trying to tell? Because this is a solo film. Am I right? Yeah. So where are we going with this, Brian? Because it's not like she ever had her own. Sh I don't. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're trying to do with this, Brian. Brian, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, my first thought was not a big enough name. Um, uh, to be honest, I think if you're trying to build something around this character as part of your Spider-Verse and you're going to have Dakota Johnson anchor your film, she's not proven that she can open films. Um, yeah. you know, obviously, she, you know, she was in the Fifty Shades series, but let's be honest. I mean, whatever box office that made really had le a lot less to do with who was <laughs> in the movie than everyone who had read the book who was just going to yeah. see whatever. Like, was How it translated so, on TV, yeah. Yeah, so... That was my first thought was like Marvel. I was Marvel does this is one of the things they do best is Marvel understands where and when they need the A-lister to sell something versus when the character will do the selling for them and therefore a lesser known uh, actor is better, right? So you know, when Chris Hemsworth is named as Thor, we're like, who? Mm -hmm. But it's the idea of seeing Thor in the world of Thor that sells you. So you almost, and then it's like, hey, we'll put Anthony Hopkins and Rene Russo. We'll surround Chris Hemsworth with all these big names. But it's the idea of the God of Thunder. That's what matters. Big enough character that you care. So to me, the issue is Madam Web on her own is probably not big enough to carry Dakota Johnson being not a, you know, an absolute top shelf actress from a brand standpoint. Mm -hmm. And she's not big enough to where you say, oh, so-and-so is doing a superhero movie in the spider. You know what I mean? Like there's a big enough name that like, if you cast them, yeah. it, it would immediately, in, you know, generate buzz. And so that's yeah. why this felt like it kind of was neither here nor there. And therefore, I'm kind of, I'm with you. I'm skeptical. Uh, I mean, obviously, also, I mean, I find it hard to believe that Dakota Johnson has like a, like a personal history or a take on this character coming in. Yeah, feels exactly. A little bit, feels a little bit more like an agent and a 
and find a role and this is what they settled on yeah. um so yeah i'm i'm very skeptical and i think you and i are both waiting for the uh the law of diminishing returns to really kick in on the <laughs> spider-verse thing and so we'll see maybe morbius will put us on that on that path but um yeah, i just yeah i don't know i'm with you i think yeah i just i just can't <laughs> see this being a hit. Yeah. I don't yeah. see it being a hit. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Now I can poke uh, fun at Morbius, but like Jared Leto has an Oscar. Yeah. Jared Leto's sold a you lot of see, records. You want to like, see I'm his performance? Like, I, yeah. 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 And like, I can't kill the choice. Like, he's a big, a big name actor. Yeah. And Morbius, and not to, not for nothing. It looks pretty good. It looks interesting. I want to see what this is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be great or not. But I'm interested in seeing what this is going to be. If this Sony is going to go for it, let's see them go for it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because if not, if they fail, you're going to have a lot of disgruntled fans chanting, "We want Spider-Man back home." Yeah, I feel, you know, I, I, I feel a little. I feel a little similar about the Aaron Taylor Johnson casting, right? I think he's a yeah. better. I think he's a better thespian, personally. That's what my taste. But I feel mm -hmm. the same way. Not a big enough name. Like, now there, the character's big enough. Craven's a big enough character. Yes, yes. I yes. just worry like enough there to mm, like make that into the Name. big hit that it could be. Yeah. So at least with that one, you kind of feel like, all right, well, that's gonna lead to Spider Man. It has to. So like, at least you know you have that like waiting. But and the thing is, this every character, not uh, and most characters, not every character, but most. All of these characters feel like the characters that we 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 we've read about in the comic books. Aaron Taylor Johnson doesn't doesn't. I don't I see Craven, and, yeah, and, I agree. and and that's the battle that that I don't know if it can be won. But let us know in the conversation below what you guys think about this Madam Web solo film. Does it make sense? Um, Brian, I haven't subscribed. To Paramount Plus, but the offer is going to make me subscribe at least to see that season of that. And perhaps who knows? You know, I don't watch a lot of stuff on Netflix. It's just this, I want to, you know, perhaps I can discover some new stuff on there. You know, every platform has their, their, their you know, their, their show that everybody needs to see. The offer for me is one that I need to see. So um, I'm definitely going to be catching that. Your thoughts on the trailer that came out, and are you? Do you have a subscription to Paramount Plus, and are you going to get one? So I did. I let it lapse. I am in a similar boat as you. I don't think it's the offer that has me. So one is I. I, I Picard Halo. Season. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Picard. Halo is the one that is <laughs> got me at least on the. So Picard season two is coming back. That's probably like something i do want to be able to see i am also interested they're, they're building this they're kind of building this nice little star war or sorry star trek verse on paramount plus okay animated live action i think okay. they're going in some interesting directions um interesting like focusing on like starfleet academy like that makes a lot of sense they're going like way out into the future like deep space like that's kind of cool um so they're kind of like taking star trek and pushing um, the bounds of it and then they're giving you Picard like in the middle which is like yeah. all right here's your next generation you know kind of Cobra Kai like fast forwarded however many years yeah. and so like there's a nice little thing going on there I think that that uh, warrants some attention I thought the Halo trailer looked good I gotta be honest like yeah I liked it like got me into I was never a devout player of the game I have played it I loved it but like you know the depiction of Master Chief is like just about right yeah, that's about yeah, right yeah, yeah. like and like the world and the the very simple hook like how do you adapt a game into a show i was like okay like you, you know they, they describe something that kind of makes sense like why you would need to have these characters there why you need your best soldier here the it, it looks like the production value is quite good like i'm i'm at least interested so and yeah it needs to look good it needs to look good um Let's see what the performances bring to us. We'll see what kind of story we get. There's a lot um, of things uh, that they have to sort of get over in order for me to really stick around. Um, but right now, I'm interested. 
I'm interested. Um, but are you looking forward to the offer? Yeah. I mean, it's just, again, it's like one of those things where like, I'm already on the fence. I'm already close. And it's like, here's one more thing that if we, if we got it, then would stick around to try and try and watch. So, yeah. Let us know what you guys think about uh, the offer. You guys, if you don't have a Paramount subscription, will you get one just to watch this? Uh, next up, Sebastian Stan. Again, he keeps knocking at the door. He keeps talking about being Star Wars, waiting for Mark Hamill's blessing. He said that months ago. Now is like you never know type situation. Brian, we talked about this earlier. Star Wars Academy, if you're going to do it, you need to do it with him. I agree. I think the fact that it would now, it would be pretty darn funny if he does join the Star Wars universe and he's not Luke Skywalker after yeah. all the fan buzz. But yeah. listen, I feel like we've seen examples of this before where fans have been very successful. But Rosario Dawson, actually, as Ahsoka, that's yeah. actually a great example where the fans lobbied for this for a long time and Disney agreed. Yeah. And then, then she showed up and looked great and Basically, people are like, perfect, like exactly what we thought. I totally agree. I think the other thing that, you know, Sebastian Stan is a very good physical actor. We know that. His work as Winter Soldier, he is very good. good. And so one of the things that I've been craving is like, you know, we got that flash of Luke, like unleashing his power in the end of The Mandalorian. And I, I do feel like having the Academy years would give you that window of, you know, Luke at the height of his, of his power. Yeah. And you got to have an actor who can make you believe in a lightsaber fight or in a force fight that he's the baddest That's dude in, yeah. in, in the fight. And so I think Sebastian Stan has already shown he can do that. Yeah. It's like, at this point, it's like, it's all about the money, right? Um, Because you can't continue. If you wanted to do the Jedi Academy, you can't continue doing it the way you've been doing it. It's been fine so far. But I guess that belief that you know that's not Mark Camel, you know that's not him. Just recast of a living person. Um, and because we know, I think you said it right. This is it's like, this would be dope if he, if he took on that role. And, and we see that moment in his career as a Jedi, like he is the guy. You know, I think so it works too because it's a different time that we haven't seen. I think yeah. as much as the fans love Sebastian Stan as like you know Mark Hamill reincarnated, I think if we were straight remaking a new hope, people would have pro- would have trouble. yeah, of course. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think the fact that this is like yeah. he gets to be Luke at an age that we've never yes, seen him yes. on screen allows a little him filled to out. be different. Yeah, a little filled out and, and, yeah. and looking strong. <laughs> Yeah, looking strong. Yeah, definitely. We got to see that. We got to see that. Disney, I know, I know they've seen it. They've heard of it. And I'm pretty sure they're talking because Sebastian's saying, although he's not saying much, he's certainly not backing down away from that role. He's been willing and and ready to play that role. And I'm sure Disney knows it. And I'm pretty sure they're talking about this could have been just a setup for that. His, 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 I think, yeah, I think yeah, the other thing yeah, too yeah. is if they go this route, you know, the, because when we started with the Mandalorian, they they deliberately stayed away from the Force and they stayed away from lightsabers, you know, except for the intro of the dark saber. But now, you know, you're going to have the Obi Wan show and you're going to have the Ahsoka show, and you can sort of see this direction of the Mandalorian with the dark saber, and we'll see how Luke and Grogu factor into that. I think you're going to have a real game of one-upsmanship between these shows on fight choreography. Because yeah. like, if Obi-Wan is what we hope it is from a fighting standpoint, that's going to throw down the gauntlet. Any show they make after that, you better not be bringing like yeah. hokey fights <laughs> with lightsabers. Like, It's going to have to look really good. Yeah. right? The choreography yeah. is going to have to be tight. And so I think yeah. that's one thing they know. Once they go down, once they open that, they can't go back. It, it can't be old Obi-Wan against no. old Vader. It can't no. be that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't give me that. After seeing the Clone Wars and the prequels and the way them dudes was fighting, yeah. that looks like I can. I got a shot. <laughs> I'll take a stab at it. <laughs> 
Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this possibility of Sebastian Stan becoming um, Luke and 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 seeing that era of 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 his life as a Jedi. Um, next up, the Joker sequel is is it, that talk is ramped up. And it looks like it's going to happen, right? In 2023, they're saying they have a for day like a production yeah. start date. We still haven't heard that Joaquin signed the dotted line. I think this. Who knows? They had a conversation. Joaquin sounded like he wanted to do it, and so they're going with that notion <laughs> or that possibility because he probably didn't say yes, but he's. You, you never know. You, I don't know if you understand. I don't know if you come out of a conversation with Joaquin Phoenix with clarity, clarity whether it's a yes or a no. So he seems like he wants to do it. Um, let's see if he does it. But they have a tall order in front of them if they do it. What kind of? Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that they are going to channel it through the Joker. Um, I don't know if you can pull it off a second time. Box be lower. Yeah. That's yeah. my prediction. Yeah. Because I think there's a novelty and a fascination when you do something like this the first time mm -hmm. that I don't think you get the second time. Mm -hmm. So you can try to go bigger. You can try to do different. I don't know exactly how you would do that, but I just think this is the kind of thing where the, once the novelty wears off and you're like, okay, I've seen Joaquin Phoenix's, you know, intense interpretation of this iconic character. He can't, he can't give you that for the first time again. Yeah. And you can evolve the Joker, but you can't really revolutionize the Joker again in, in, in his portrayal of it. So, you know, to, to the elephant in the room, there's only one way to make this movie bigger than the last one. And I just don't know if they're willing and able to do it yeah. if Matt Reeves' Batman is doing what we think it's going to do this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's... <sighs> this is what happens when you give people the freedom to do whatever they want. They come up with something great with characters that are in the same world, but they can't merge because it doesn't make sense. Hangover became Hangover 2, became Hangover 3. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. Same director. I'm sure the money is... Ridiculous. Godfather offer to get Joaquin mm -hmm. Phoenix to do a sequel at all. They're probably yeah. basically like, we will fund every independent movie <laughs> you want to do for the rest of your life if you do this. this. But again, I just... You know, as I said, like I use the hangover analogy because like there was a surprise monster. Mon they're like, we got to do a sequel, and the quality just went straight downhill because the gimmicks you couldn't you couldn't make the gimmicks yeah, yeah. new again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let us know in the comment section below. Um, does this happen? It seems like it's going to happen. Are you excited for? It? Are you? Do you think it's going to make gangbusters like it did last time? Let us know in the comment section below. Um, we got two more topics, two more topics. But before we move on, I wanted to say something regarding a, a, a statement that was made, and I wanted to hear your take on it, Brian. Um, I was watching JC, and I watch JC all the time. I like his show. I like what he does. I respect him for what he does. Um, but I don't often agree with him. I agree with him a lot of times, and, and, and I like to hear his perspective on stuff. But he said something that I didn't quite agree with. He said that um, that Marvel and the MCU, and he said that the MCU was not successful because of because it has a universe and the connectivity. He says it's because they make great movies. He says it's BS that it that people think that it is because it's connected. He says it's because they make great movies. I agree with them. They do great, make great, great movies. But the reason why they are successful is because, as also because they are connected. The two go hand in hand. 
if Iron Man doesn't succeed, the rest of this doesn't succeed. Iron Man did what it did. And the ending of that film, the, the end credit set you up for what this was going to be. The connectivity of the subsequent movies that came out is what kept you coming. The end of Avengers, the first Avengers, is what kept you coming for more. It's because of the connectivity and because they make great movies. And they don't know, they're not always great. No. You know, they, they've missed on a few. But we keep on coming because it gives us, when, when you see the other movies and you like, oh, snap, because of this, you appreciate that movie. Even though it wasn't all that great. Thor, The Dark World is a forgotten movie. I don't know. I don't know what was that, but it, you know, it gave us obviously the, the ether, whatever the case may be. So there's that, but to say that the MCU is not successful, that has nothing to do with them being connected is in my opinion, uh, not true. It's because they make great movies and because it's connected is because they're successful. Brian, your thoughts. Yeah, I would lean more in your direction on that. I think, you know, from a very simplistic standpoint, the connectivity bought Marvel a couple of mulligans on some bad films. Yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel, you referenced Thor The Dark World. There are definitely movies that would have made a, in my opinion, would have made a fraction of the box office they did had they not been bridges and parts of the whole. I mean, Captain yeah. Marvel to me is the poster child for this. Yeah. The fact that that's a billion dollar plus global movie has, has, I mean, all due respect, I mean, Brie Larson's won an Oscar. She's a great actress. Yeah. It has nothing to do with anything unique to that film, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. It's entirely about where that film was in the calendar <laughs> relative to Endgame. That's it. I just. You put any movie I'm just saying, like, in that, in that released, spot. They released, I was put this way. If they release Captain Marvel in 2008 instead of Iron Man 1, what is the box office of Captain Marvel? Does it do 100 million US? Maybe. In a billion dollars. <laughs> it's not a good at all. In a billion dollars. Exactly. That's connectivity. Now, I agree with, I, re, I agree with his premise, and, I, and we've talked about this a lot, which is Marvel rarely, as great as they are now, Marvel still doesn't act as if they're guaranteed the next movie. I love that about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shang Chi is a great example of this to me, and it's one of the reasons I, you know, I, you and I disagree a little bit on the movie. I think the movie's a great achievement because it's it when you think about 2021, it's really one of the few true new entries that we got new characters, new worlds. And even though Marvel knows now, they've got the backing to make whatever they want, basically. Yeah, yeah. To me, the care with which the movie's made still says we're acting like we get one shot at this. Yeah. And that I appreciate about them because it means that a lot of these projects can stand alone. And even if yeah. you don't watch the other 20, you can yeah. appreciate a lot of these individual movies on their own for what they are. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's where I agree with John. They, yeah. I agree with him in that sense. Like, yeah. Because I, we see it in other universes all the time. And yeah. DC was a great example of this. Like, yeah. DC was always, you know, it's the, to borrow Yoda's phrase when he's criticizing Luke, he's like, never your mind on where you are, what you're doing, right? <laughs> Always looking to the future. Yeah, yeah. That's the mistake of a lot but, of these studios. Yes, but uh, for DC, um, there was, listen, the DC Cinematic Universe could have been created in 1989. Could have started in 1989. Sure. And, or it could have started with Superman, the first Superman, 1978, 77, I believe, Christopher Reeve. 78, yeah. Yeah, 78. It could have started with him. They had all the properties, but they didn't think like this, but the way Kevin is Well, thinking. nobody, very few people did at that time. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had George Lucas that had Star Wars. 
He had yeah, his he, world. He's an ideas guy. Yeah. I mean, exactly. So the fact that you still had this opportunity, this possibility to do something like that, um, who knows where we could have been. But they didn't think about it like that. They thought, of, they thought about it the way they did, and they never had long-lasting success. It's been reboot after a certain amount of numbers reboot certain certain years off and you know it, it, the consistency at marvel is ridiculous right but it, it feeds the point though because dc's dc was always trying to backfill an ending right they're like yeah. our entire mission is justice league justice league justice league how do we get there as fast as possible and then yeah. we're going to skip steps and we're going to backfill to get to justice league that's my point is Marvel took 12 years. Yeah. There was definitely points along the way where monetarily you could have been like, screw this, let's just skip and get to you know endgame yeah. now. Yeah. And they're like, no, we're gonna slow play this and Papa not team. take for granted. Yeah. We're not gonna take for granted. And that way, when we get there, there's investment, there's stakes, there's payoff, and everybody cares, legit cares, right? It's an yeah. emotional moment. When you see Avengers Assemble. Yeah. It is. Like, I don't yeah. care what genre it is. It's an emotional moment. I, I, I see where um, um, John Campion is coming from, from, your, from how you expressed it. Um, but I think the success of the MCU and Marvel as a whole is due to great movies as well as that con connectivity. That's what I think keeps us coming back for more and more and more and more. Um, the Aquaman sequel, it, you know, Brian, that I don't like. The real reason you want Batman <laughs> to make a billion five is so that you no longer have to describe Aquaman as the highest growth <laughs> movie. That's what you really, that's why you really want one five for the Batman. Yeah. I wanted to beat out the Aquaman because he doesn't, deserve, <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. I'm sorry. He doesn't deserve it. There are other roles for for Mr. Uh, uh, Jason Momoa. Same oh, speaking, of, yeah. speaking of, a, a role I think he is very well suited for. Apparently he's going to be the villain in the next Fast and Furious movie. Now that, ah, yes, I yes, think yes, he yes, would yes. do very well. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's a perfect role for him. Because he does, he does a good job as a, as a bad guy. Yeah, um, I agree. Underutilized, I think, as a villain. Yeah. Did you see him in that movie with Sylvester Stallone? I forgot what it was. He did a movie um, with Sylvester Stallone. He was he was fighting. I think the last battle was, he was fighting with axes and stuff like, against him. Uh, yeah. Is that? Let um, me get this wrong. Bullet to the head. Is that what that? Yes. Was yes. I, I I'm surprised I remember that because that title is like unforgettable. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's forgettable. Sorry. Bullet yeah. to the head. So yeah. Um, let's see. Um, they're, they're sort of um, doing some new VFX on Aquaman, and they're really, I guess, excited about that. Similar to how we're excited about this new flying technique that they have for Black Adam, which I still... Uh, when does that movie come out? Black Adam is July. Aquaman is uh, December. Yes. Um, but listen... I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there looking forward to, to seeing Aquaman 2 because they enjoyed Aquaman, the first one. I enjoyed it visually. I enjoyed some of the things, but um, they probably heard what James Cameron is doing over there in Avatar. Like, listen. You got it. I we got to. I had the same thought. <laughs> we we got to come correct because this dude got something. Uh, yo, I... I Somebody forget about it. They, they're like, we got to compete with this because when this comes out, we can't look stupid. So, your thoughts? Yeah, I had the same thought. And it was Patrick Wilson, um, Ocean Master, who's mm -hmm. of course who's been talking about this. And he, he he said this in the context of something that I think is actually encouraging, albeit in a not necessarily a way that you and I might appreciate. But he basically identified. The truth I thought about Aquaman, which is he's like basically said, look, we don't really understand why this worked as well as it did. He's yeah. like, but we understand what worked in the sense of we found this niche 
visually, tonally, that for whatever reason, people around the world really got behind. And that's a true statement. Like, mm. regardless of what we think about it, a billion mm. two a box office says it, it, it hit a nerve in a strange way. And so the point of the VFX comment that he made was, yeah. we're trying to harness and lean into those aspects, the things that we know appeal to the people. And I actually think that's incredibly smart. I mean, that's the only yeah. way this can go. I, I really do. I think if yeah. this tried to all of a sudden be, hey, we want to get gritty or we want, no, nah, that's not going to work. Yeah, it's yeah, got to yeah. be more 80s. It's got to be more yeah. neon. And yeah, I'm curious as to what the VFX is going to look like, especially because as you said, <laughs> I know we're going to see something we've never seen before underwater with Avatar. Yeah. So you're not going to beat James Cameron straight up. So the only way is it's going to work is you got to basically kind of, you got to kind of remix it and yeah, have it be yeah. fun and different. Because yeah. if you're going to try to go toe to toe for quality, you've already lost. Yeah. Sorry. Like, I, I don't even need to see these movies. You already lost. That dude spent 13 years yeah. to make an what? underwater movie. Whatever technology they have, he's the first to have it. <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm pretty sure they heard something and be like, yo, we got to, this got to look but dope. But let's for a second, mm -hmm. who knows how good this will be. But I do need, let's give the tip of the cap to Black Adam. I, for, if these are legitimately new types of visuals that we haven't actually seen, good for them, as I said, for trying. I'd rather yeah. see them try these and us come on the show and be like, cool, boy, that didn't work. I'd rather mm -hmm. have them try it than, than play it safe and mm -hmm. do the same types of things that we've seen in terms of action. So yeah, I'm curious. I'm yeah. skeptical, but I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I can't wait till we see more. I, I want to talk about Black Adam. I want to see what else they have to show when the trailer comes out. I'm, 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 I mean, I can't wait. it is yeah. February, people. It was five months away. Like you're, they are, they are seriously acting like, this is a billion and a half movie if they didn't show us a frame. I don't, like, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Super Bowl? <laughs> I haven't heard any talk. I did hear we're getting Lord of the Rings at the Super Bowl. That's okay. That could be fun. That could if be we fun. don't if we don't get a black Adam in the suit, yo, I don't know what's up with this dude, yo. I I I I don't know, man. I don't know. That should be number one priority. For Black Adam to be at the Super Bowl, if, he, if there was a stage, and we know that he likes a stage where everybody's watching, this would be the time to show us something. If you don't have anything, that's that's very disappointing. What do you think the odds are that a movie gets delayed? We obviously saw Mission Impossible Seven and Eight got pushed again, even though those movies are pretty far. I just think it five months out. All we have is the fandom semi teaser it, it has a little bit of a feel of this might not be coming out in july if it's delayed it's because it's unfortunate i don't think it's delayed because of pandemic reasons or anything i no. think it's just delayed because not they're ready. not they, they're just not ready that's the only thing that makes sense because this movie has been shot already so what's happening what's going on you can't I mean, like, show us nothing. I mean, we got the first Batman teaser 15 months ago. And Batman. Batman didn't need 15 months of <laughs> promotion. It's the same I studio. I don't get it. I don't get it. But I don't know what to say about that, but I have my 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 reasons for what I think. Is going on, but I'm not going to talk about it no more because I've said enough about it. Anyway, um, next up, Oscar Isaac's Moon Knight. He, Brian, he seems to be very excited about what we, this show has to show us. Um, he states that there were there are a lot of liberties taken in this show. 
um, in terms of where it's going and how they do things. Your thoughts on, uh, are you even more excited based on what you uh, read on his, on what he had to say about this? Yeah, I, I, I am excited. I, li- I like the teaser. I like the look. Yeah, I like the gothic horror aspect that, that they seem to portray. Yeah. He, he really is stressing that this is kind of weird, far out. Some of the things you talked about, like it really does sound like it's, you know, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, Oscar, literally Oscar Isaac, you know, he's, he's, I know, he, I know Moon Knight is kind of white, but like, he's basically wearing a chef's hat. It's like <laughs> time to cook for yeah. however many episodes this is going to run. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what you want. I mean, you don't hire Oscar Isaac and, and Ethan Hawke to, conform necessarily to a stereotypical role you hire if you hire them hire them to flex their acting chops and, yeah. and let it let it now i did think it was interesting he, he he called this a limited series now i don't know if that was a misspeak um but usually that's referring to something that is one season yeah so i'm curious to know if this is basically like a almost like an elongated movie and they already know that this is one and done because um we haven't had a Marvel show that def- came out with that idea, right? It was like WandaVision yet, but they left the door open. Falcon Winter Soldier, same thing. That'd be interesting if this show was actually formulated and shot with the idea that it was going to be six episodes, seven episodes, and that's mm-hmm. it. It was going to have an yeah. end. I would assume that they're going to tell a specific story, and then after that, he's just going to be making cameos in certain people's films and I mean, let's see what story they're going to tell. That Icarus is in the series, right? Really? And Moon Knight? I think because isn't Moon Knight like almost there's a time travel, there's a time travel history, history ah, of this, right? because of the Egyptian gods. Gosh, yeah, okay, okay. So there's okay, a rumor okay. that Richard Madden is in this series. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. But let's see what story they tell uh, and and does it warrant at the end of this another season if we're satisfied with it being a dope season like like uh, um, what was it that we saw the Watchmen um, Queen's Gambit I mean we can get something that's really well done in six seven eight episodes and that and that'll be it but instead of it being it for sure for forever He'll show up in different, uh, especially with Blade and whatever they got going on with perhaps giving Ghost Rider. Who knows? So let us know in the yeah yeah yeah. Let us know in the comment section below um, uh, what you guys think of uh, Oscar Isaac's comments about the Moon Knight show. Brian, um, do you have time for one more topic? Yeah, sure. I know. We've been hearing a lot of things about Doctor Strange 2. And I think we talked about it previously, but we briefly mentioned it. There's a lot of talk of cameos. Oh, yes. I'm glad you brought this up. There's a lot of talk of cameos. And I don't know. I mean, yes, the cameos worked. And they worked very well with Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, it seems like they're going... I mean, the multiverse, it's not like they can't explain this, right? They can't, they're can't. they not going to make it look dumb, right? I think in the trailer, we already set some things up that makes it possible for these things to occur, right? But listen... If you told me, A, you want to see Tom Cruise as Iron Man? Yeah, I'd like to see it. I'm curious. I'll see it. We might get them. We get might get to see that. Right? Um, what are your thoughts on, 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 on these cameos? Are they overdoing it? Is it going to make it better? Is this the time to do it? Because it really only presents... This is the multiverse of manage. Anything goes here. We don't know. You know, you can do anything. Um, what are you? How excited are you for this? Or you think they're doing too much? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Um, I think it's. I think it's disrespectful to the to the structure of No Way Home to call those cameos because I. Each of those parts was written with 
purpose. I think yeah, yeah. some were, you know, some were better served than others. I think like, you know, Sandman doesn't get like a lot of run. Doesn't yeah, 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 yeah. Need yeah. Thomas Hayden Church except for one scene. But, yeah. but those were real parts. Those parts had meat. There was evolution from the cameo to me is, is, is in for 20, 30 seconds and you have a good laugh and it's like an aha moment and you kind of go out and it's completely, uh, it's just not impactful to the, the real story. And so Tom yeah. Cruise's Iron Man as the example or Emily Blunt, you know, doing, doing Black Widow, like would be like that for me. It's like, it's, it, it does have a little feel of a way to sell some more tickets Right. In the sense yeah, of if there's yeah, a lot yeah. of these, like you're like, hey, go check this out. Cause if you ever want to see your favorite Hollywood stars, <laughs> a superhero doppelganger, like now's your chance. Like that would yeah. increase the appeal of this movie. But I don't necessarily think it would increase the quality of this movie because we know like there's no arc for Tom Cruise's Iron Man. Like yeah, yeah. there's not. Like Tom yeah. Cruise is not becoming Tony Stark for the next 10 years. Yeah, That's yeah. what concerns me. It's like you're, you are automatically what you can do with these like jumping into pockets of the multiverse where there are real strands to then explore mm -hmm. yeah okay i'm interested in stuff like that but you know about and hearing about playing these they're not doing five pictures in 10 years this is yeah thanks for helping us make dr strange you know a billion dollar plus movie yeah. that makes me a little nervous because this movie is it's really good, and I just don't want to devote too much time to these little kind of side gags. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. Let's see um, what happens in this film. Um, I hope to revisit this topic um, when we get more from Doctor Strange, because. Um, you know, there's there's been some people that talk about the, the you know this this multiverse thing may get resolved at the end of this film, which I don't think. I think the multiverse is here to stay for quite some time. Yeah, I agree. Um, especially if we're talking about revisiting this multiverse multiversal war, which I think equals the secret wars, um, and the explanation. I mean, you you have the book. What's it called? Uh, the dark. The dark. The dark cold. Yes, that sort of opens perhaps the dimensions of other characters. Um, but for this multiversal situation, um, is the only explanation for these other, I guess, iterations of um, Spider Man and 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 other characters. Um, but I definitely I want to revisit this. Uh, the, the Doctor Strange situation and this multiverse. And, and I want to sort of explore the question of how does the multiverse get resolved? There's going to be a very thing, very interesting um, thing to watch when it does happen, uh, when we get closer towards it, because it, it sounds real complex. And, and I think if you're familiar with the comics and stuff, there's a lot of events, man that how do you explain it with if you don't have the multiverse um but uh let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about all these cameos um brian uh less than a month away man it's gonna get even more real when i have the tickets when i have those tickets that's when it's gonna this is gonna the, the the anxiety is gonna feel like i'm obsessed man read you got to read this book. You got to read this book. You got to read this book, man. You got to read this book. Well, I'll just tell, I'll tell the viewers, if you, if you actually see a bat signal in your sky, that is Pablo <laughs> on the rooftop. So waiting. Shining like, that into the night. <laughs> Listen, uh, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. Um, but that's our show for today. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell. Um, comment in the comment section below on some of the topics that we discussed today. Again, you know, our aim is to always dive a little bit deeper into some of the news items that comes out on a week to week basis and sort of explore where this whole super genre, superhero genre is going. 
And obviously, we don't want it to end. And we sort of call out call out the the, the BS, man, and 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 the risks being taken. That because it all is all it's gonna take a a string of bad films for this to go, you know, be over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all it's gonna take. Um, before studios be like, that's it, we can't do any more of these. We don't want to. We want nothing to do with it. Um, and I hope we don't see that day. Um, but hopefully somebody's listening and 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 realizes what needs to be done. We can't we can't get no hokey type stuff, man. This is, you know, it doesn't always have to be serious. I guess for those people who like Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, this this is you know I, I'm pretty sure you enjoy the non seriousness of it all and the comedic takes that I don't know how you find that's comedy, but. Hey, everybody likes what they like, and and yeah. you know, so is all good. But um, yeah, um, we'll see you next time on Energy Report.